Hello, Community Art Kitchen here, part one. My name is Barbara Libby Steinman. I'm the visual arts teacher at Basic Elementary School in California. Our schools are closed due to the shelter in place situation. And I would like to show you how you can continue to create wonderful art with very, very simple materials that you have in your kitchen. So today I'm going to show you how to make paint with um, coffee and I'm going to use an instant, instant espresso coffee. You can also brew your own coffee. A very strong brew would be great. Uh, please do not use coffee grounds and put water into them. That's not going to work very well. So other materials you're going to need besides the uh, instant coffee or regular brewed black coffee is um, a brush. And if you don't have a brush, you can use a Q-tip, a spoon to mix the coffee ground, excuse me, the espresso into the water and some paper to paint on. And I'm going to lead you through how to paint these beautiful um, California poppies and, um, and a clover today. So let's get started. I'm going to first make a nice dark mix uh, with this instant coffee over here. I'm going to put um, a teaspoon of the instant coffee into the water and give that a nice good stir. If you use hot water, this is going to um, dilute faster and better. Mm, I can smell the nice coffee scent here. Okay, so that's probably good. And then set the spoon over here on the paper towel. Over here I have just um, clear water and let's close the coffee up so we don't make a mess. If you have any kind of shallow dishes um, to make different uh, tones, of your coffee ground, um, that would be great. So I'm going to lead you through that right now. What do I mean by different tones? So um, in art, it's nice to have a variety of um, values. And so here is a value study that I'm going to guide you through first. So we're going to create a very, very dark value, a medium and a light value with our coffee today. So let's try to attempt that. Um, and of course, you're going to need some sort of paper to paint on. This is watercolor paper. So if you have watercolor paper, that's uh, going to give you the best result because this paper um, can absorb the water. If you don't have watercolor paper, any kind of um, recycled uh, birthday card you can paint on or um, some packaging paper or cardboard would also work. Okay, so we are going to create three different values. Let's see. And I'm going to um, use a watercolor brush. This is just a regular non-fancy brush really from my classroom. So I'm going to um, put some of this dark, dark coffee in here. No water added to this anymore because I want this to be my darkest value. And now I'm going to try it out on my paper and I'm just going to stroke from the bottom up like this. And um, this is going to be this nice dark value. And now I'm going to add the dark coffee into my second palette area here. And now I'm adding water to it. So maybe one, two, three, four scoops of water um, and you can kind of see in my water makes a nice um, tone as well. So I'm going to clean my brush and wipe it over here and see if that made it any lighter. So give that a try. Yep. So that looks like a good medium value. And now you guessed it, we're going to make the lightest one. So I'm actually going to borrow some of this color, put it over here and just add more water to it. Do you see what I did there? It's easier to get your lighter value. And let's um, paint that on here. So 
So here is our super, super light value, but you can still see it dark, medium, light. So we're gonna set that to the side um, and we, we have them here in our palette to paint our flowers. So we're gonna let this dry and I wanna show you how um, in part two, I'm gonna guide you how to um, do line work on top of these um, value studies, which could be a beautiful art piece on its own. Here's another one. Um, this one I made four. So um, again, this is in class two where I'm gonna show you how to embellish your coffee paintings. All right, so I'm going to start with a clean sheet of paper and I would like to guide you through how to um, paint California poppies. Uh, this is a wildflower guidebook of Northern California's um, areas. And right now it's springtime and the poppies are sticking their oranges heads out. So um, I want you to notice where the uh, light does not hit the petals over here and where they're overlapping is the dark value, medium value, and the lightest value. So that's kind of what we're going to imitate. We're not really trying to paint um, super realistic flowers. So um, here we go. I'm going to start whoops, with my darkest value. And I am just gonna relax my shoulders and just gonna go for it. Before I actually paint, I kind of practice. This is kind of how I want the stem to go. And then I just go for it. Here we go. Now to do the petals, I'm gonna have you just roll the brush this way and stamp it. So this is petal number one, and then maybe roll it that way. Petal number two, another one over here, petal number four, and excuse me, three, and then um, the fourth one, we can maybe come in from this angle. So this could be poppy number one. Um, if you wanna do leaves, they have these really fine um, feathery kind of leaves, so I'm gonna just swish, swish, swish with my brush like that. Okay, now um, to do one with your lighter value, please wash your brush out, dab it a little bit on the paper towel. Now um, grab your medium value, and um, I'm gonna do the petals first on this one. And what that does is when you, when you create one with a lighter value, um, it, it's going to appear like it's farther back. Now you do want not to touch the one that you just did with the darker valley because otherwise they're gonna run together. Okay, and here is its stem. Swoosh like that. Okay, so now sometimes it happens when you move your brush across, little drops will happen. And I think that's not a mistake. Some people say, oh no, I ruined my painting. Don't worry, I am going to actually do more of that as a texture in the background. And so now we're going to try to do a clover. So I did a clover right here. Um, and you can use another piece of watercolor paper to do that with, or you can work on a um, card. Here we go. Here's another paper. And so now I'm going to use, I think the darker value again. And to do a clover, you can use the same stamping technique, but um, do it twice for one petal. So you get this heart shape. And um, down here as well, kind of go around with that, and here's my fourth. This is a lucky clover with four petals. And um, sometimes to give a nice flow to the stem, I challenge myself and use my non-dominant hand so that um, it's nice and flowy. So that's how you can do a clover. So all of these flowers need to dry um, and 
and um, when they dry, they, the values do look a little bit lighter than um, what they appear when you paint them. Here's another one. So I encourage you to do about three or four at the same time so that they can dry and then you have something that you can work on top of. Um, next time, we will add line techniques to our coffee paintings and um, this is what it might look like with um, line techniques added on. Great, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration on how to paint with coffee and uh, join us in Community Art Kitchen Part 2 to finish your work. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.